The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Uh, first of all, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge all our previous community leaders and to acknowledge our current community leaders because we've all been in this volunteering together just to make our Bronx community um, to give a better quality of life to all the Bronx residents, okay? So thank you for that. So what I'm going to start with, just to let you know, that the agenda, we are going to adjust the agenda today because we will have to go into an executive session. All right. So first we'll go through the reports, then we'll have to go to an executive session. All right. I see somebody has her hand raised. Yes. Is this the moment where the general public can make comments about uh, concern? No. Yes, yes, yes. We're definitely going to have public speaks. Yes. Okay. Is that now? That's just about now. Okay. All right. All uh, right. Just hold on one minute. All right. So I am going to start with the public speaks. All right. And what we'll do, you'll have three minutes to make the presentation. And John, John Isaac. <laughs> I was muted. I'm here, Egeria. I got you. Okay. Okay, cool. John Isaac is going to keep time and he'll let you know when your time is about up. So I will ask if you are going to speak or if you would like to speak um, during the community's, um, community session, which is for the public, um, please raise your hand. Okay. All right. So let me start with Dr. Mary or Reardon, right? Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring to the attention of the community board a problem that we've been having in Woodlawn. We have um, something, um, it's called Exhale Smoke Shop on 4338 Katona Avenue, also known officially as Woodlawn Convenient Core. And in um, in November, it's, it's newly set up. Uh, November 24th, it was cited for uh, selling tobacco to minors. It doesn't even have a tobacco license. Uh, also, um, displaying drug paraphernalia within 500 feet of the school. It's actually within 250 feet of PS19. Um, and uh, there was supposed to be a hearing in January, um, but they never showed up. The Will It Belong Convenient Corps, from what we understand. And then we thought it was going to be rescheduled. Long story short, nothing has happened to address the situation. And now it's gotten in a way worse because uh, last week there was what appears to have been a robbery at that site. And uh, the store owner was taken out or she ran out after the robbers. They started to beat her up. This happened at uh, shortly after three o'clock, there were school children who were it. Um, and uh, it's just, and we also heard at, there was a lot of discussion at the time of the robbery, and we heard that they have indeed been selling marijuana there. And they don't have a license, obviously, to do that, nor to even sell tobacco. So I know that all the elected officials know about it, but uh, nothing's happened. They also have an awning that seems, doesn't seem to be following the code. I don't even know, I know we want taxpayers have complained, but because of Omicron, they haven't had meetings in two months. I know that they, they've tried, but I'm just an individual concerned citizen, also in communication with other moms. Um, and just, we, we are really upset that this store is operating so close to the school is selling marijuana that's not legal anywhere yet, from what I understand. Um, so 
selling tobacco, it has been documented sell tobacco to minors. And a very disturbing awning with what appears to be a child uh, with a backwards baseball cap with smoke coming out both sides of his mouth. So um, nothing's, it just seems that the owners just have, like, they have absolutely no regard for the law, respect for the law, or for the community. So I'm just bringing this to the attention of the board. There may be some others here who want to talk too about that. I'm not sure, but uh, that's what I have to say. I would like um, to voice my opinion on something, if I may. Um, who's speaking? My name is Nancy. Okay. Um, can you voice your opinion? Can you just hold on because I have somebody else in line? Is this about the same? How could I go about raising my hand? Cause I don't see the raising hand button. Sorry about that. Um, how you? Okay. I don't want to jump the line. So I don't. I just my. Okay. All right. So I'll get to you. This is I A Mercer, right? Okay. So let me take the next person in line, and then I'll get back to you, Nancy Page. I see that you have your hand raised. All right. But the next person in line is Reggie. From Mind Builders? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Thank okay. you uh, for giving me this opportunity in this space. Much appreciated. Um, so I'm just going to talk briefly in regards to Mind Builders. Okay. Um, we um, we just wanted to let you guys know um, about some of our pre-programming program, programming that we're offering both uh, adults, and young adults, teens, um, and also um, some adult um, free programming opportunities. Okay. So I'll just start with the, the young adults pre free programming opportunities. So we have this program called Apex, which uh, uh, pretty much engages young young adults with um, music, more digit in the digital music production aspect and um, anime and visual arts with uh, multimedia aspects. This is free programming for um, young adults uh, and teenagers from the age of uh, I believe it is uh, thirteen to twenty one. We meet uh, Tuesdays and Fridays, um, and I think Visual Arts meets Wednesdays and Fridays in the evening time from about 4 to 7 o'clock. Uh, we have rolling registration at the moment, so um, you know, please let your young folks know that we um, are still registering. We also have a drama program that um, is, uh, though there's uh, an interview process, there's also has some ongoing um, registration. That's not rolling registration though. Our last day to register, register for that one is March 9th. Both are free. Both actually have stipends for young po folks. So if you know young people who want to join this and also get paid to do art, please let them know. Um, we also have uh, free fit classes for adults and older teens from 16 to adults. These classes run on Tuesdays from 7 to 8 and that's virtual. We have Zumba slash Fit for Life on Wednesdays from 7 to 8 and Saturdays 9 to 10. We have Soka Thursday from 7 to 8. And then we have Stretch on Fridays from 3 to 4. We we're also offering for young, young adults and teens our community um, folk culture program, which engages folks in uh, college level um, cultural research and documentation and presentation programming. Um, this range is from indigenous uh, to indigenous African um, artists and um, documentarians, as well as um, more contemporary um, artists. Um, so it's, it's a wide range as far as that goes. Um, and I believe that is it. But we offer um, free programming. We also have this Friday for any young adults or teens you may know from the age of 14 to 21. We will have our um, first teen event of the year. It's called Freestyle Fridays. It's something that is going to engage adults in um, positive act activities, uh, teaching them. Um, we will have our Apex teachers there, so they'll be doing kind of like samples of what they do in class. We'll have a mobile studio. We're going to have um, art making. We're also going to have um, uh, possibly uh, open mic. We're going to have a special guest DJ, and every month we're going to have a special guest DJ. These events are free for young adults. They just have to RSVP. Um, I'm going to put the information for RSVP in the chat. But, um, yeah, so we have a lot of ongoing free programming. Please also don't be shy to pass by our building. It's 3415 Olinville Avenue. Um, really, really great building, really great opportunity to really engage the community um, in a positive way. 
So thank you for this space. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm finished. Okay. Thank you. And you're going to put the um, information in the chat. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, next, we have Nancy Page. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I wanted to... Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Nancy. I've been living in the neighborhood for about five, six years. Mm -hmm. um, I've been coming into this small shop since it's opened. And I'm not sure. I'm not well. I don't have the knowledge about if they're supposed to be there or not. But about them selling tobacco products and pot and stuff like that is a lie because I frequent this place a lot to buy snacks from my family, um, and even the exotic snacks from my nephews. And I have never seen them sell any of that. I've actually witnessed people coming and asking for even vape pens and stuff like that, and they reject them. You know, if there was a place that would actually be selling it, I think they would have, you know, I don't think they would lie. That's money that they're leaving on the table, but... I don't think that they're selling any of those stuff that people are saying or that this person, Miss Mary, that is the only one that I have been seeing commenting stuff on Facebook. You know, it's just I just wanted to voice my opinion of that because I've been here. I've been living here for a couple of years and I do witness people like this person that is always harassing people and saying stuff that is not true. You know, people can get in trouble for this. If you don't have any proof about that, don't lie. OK. All right, thank you. Thank you for that. No, All no right. Problem. Now the next we have is Maurice Heard. Maurice. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi there, good evening. Uh, my name is Maurice Heard. I've been a lifelong Bronx resident for the 28 years that I've been alive. I was born in the Our Lady of Mercy Hospital, now Montefiore Medical Center in Wakefield, and I currently live in Baychester. Um, my reason for attending tonight's meeting is to become a bit more active in my community and to get a better sense of what is going on in terms of, you know, programming and how, you know, money is allocated for certain project for certain projects. Um, I recently founded an organization called Most Healthy Bronx, and it's dedicated to raising and promoting public health awareness in our, in our borough. We pursue this goal through educational efforts and advocacy initiatives tailored to informing and motivating Bronx residents to be healthy. Uh, just wanted to let you all know, this year we're going to be starting some programming. So beginning with park cleanups, um, in the month of April in honor of Earth Day. And I myself, I am a personal trainer at night. During the day, I work in clinical research and I hope to run um, fitness events during the summer. So uh, workouts um, on the weekend at certain parks, Pelham Bay Park, Van Cortland Park, you name it. So I just wanted to say hello to everyone and, and introduce myself to the, to the larger community. Okay, thank you and welcome. <laughs> thank you. All right. All right. Okay, so next we have Jasmine Altagrac Altagracia. Yes, hi, nice to meet you guys. Um, I wanted to speak on behalf of the smoke shop because I myself am a teen and I have been in there with my parents to buy exotic snacks. Um, some of us, um, speaking for all clients, for the behalf of us, some of us are being chased um, by Miss Mary. She has been harassing us, asking us what have we been buying at the store. And I find critical that most of the people that um, have something to say about the smoke shop also go in there to buy. Because I have seen certain clients that talk about the store, yet they keep on going. Um, as behalf of the products, I wouldn't be able to tell you, but I know for myself that they do not give to um, teens, let alone minors, because I've been there myself. So, yeah, I just want to, um, Mary, you um, did confess to it on Facebook because I am in one of the group chats. So I just wanted to address that real quick. Okay. Thank you for that. All right. All right. I A Mercer, I see you did find the hands up button. <laughs> I found it. I found it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, so my name is Ira Mercer. Um, I'm from... I was, I lived in the Bronx mostly all my life on the way, coming from the West Indies, you know, White Plains area. 
Um, I just moved back to the Bronx about a year ago from Brooklyn, Crown's Height. Um, okay. but the street that I live on, what I caught, what I came to address, you know what I mean? Cause I had called Street One One, and they told me that I need to, you know, address that with your boy me, and they have one every Thursday of the month, as Thursday of the month. So um, I gave the brother George a call, and he told me he sent me the link, but. Nevertheless, what I what I came to address was where I live at on two twenty first on White Plains Road, right? Mm-hmm. It, it don't have no lights at all. Plenty of time I myself nearly ran yeah. down somebody, myself, you know, um, a lady coming probably going from work, going home to her kids, you know what I'm saying? Um, it don't have no light. I see they building a new building there. They probably might bring a light, but. I don't know how long it is. Is it, it that need to be addressed as soon as possible? You know what I mean. That um, I don't know why it took so long for them to even address that issue. But that's that's pretty much what I want to address on um two twenty first East, um White Plains Road. What kind of light are you referring to? A traffic light or a street, a, a street, a street, street light? light? Sorry about that street light. Sorry about that street light. Yeah, okay. it's pitch dark. Like it's no, like, you literally can't see nothing. Like if you're standing on two nineteen, you could probably see. You can you still can't see two twenty first block. You gotta like see two twenty. Like it's like that's pitch black in that section in that area. You know, it's like you're looking past it, looking towards two twenty first street. I mean two twenty second street. You know what I mean? There's no light at all at night time. You know. All right, got it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Marcel. Okay. You're welcome. No, I thank you too for um, giving me that opportunity to express that my thoughts too. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else for the public gallery? Kevin. Yes. Um, okay. I'm a resident of Woodlawn, and I did reach out to uh, Dinowitz with regards to concerns because the signage over that store in the neighborhood of Woodlawn, says it's a smoke shop, says it sells vape products, says it has a hookah lounge. So I don't care what kind of snacks it is offering inside. That's the signage right on top of the store. And Dinowitz said it it is within, it's uh, less than 500 feet. It's not supposed to be licensed to operate there. And uh, that's just what the signage is. I've never been in it or out of it. That's what the signs on top of it say, and it is a concern for it does appear to violate the zoning regulations with regards to the location of such a store and its proximity to students and a school. Okay. So I just want to support that concern. It's something I've communicated to other uh, elected officials, and this is our community. We do want a safe and healthy one and a safe one. and one that's uh, correctly following the regulations for where businesses can be located. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I see Jasmine Altagracia. Yes. Sorry to intervene again. I'm so sorry about that. Um, due to, I understand what Kevin and Andy Furnity, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly or saying, but um, the other grocery stores in front of the schools, and some other stores, um, not to mention any names, they do sell cigarettes, and that doesn't seem to be a problem. So, like, my question to the public is, why is this smoke shop such a problem, but the other stores um, selling beer and stuff like that aren't a problem? Okay. It's a regulation for zoning. All right. So, George, do you have an answer? Yeah, um, I'm listen, the, the elected officials are here. I see Dinowitz's office is here. I see that uh, co- uh, the senator's office. We have all been in communication with one another, and I always try to speak with the same voice um, because, you know, I think people try to play gotcha games by sending 15 different emails to all the different elected officials, and then they try to catch us out there. I've been consistent. The community board is not an enforcement agency. I've pointed this out to everybody that calls us. Um, you can easily call 311. Um, complaints have been filed with the del- buildings department with regards to the awning. Complaints have been filed with and violations have been written by the Department of Worker and Consumer Protection for the hearing. So what uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Mary was referring to earlier 
Um, they had a hearing scheduled at OF, which is the Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings. The owner of the, f- the facility did not show. Um, they received a default judgment against them for both of those violations. I don't know what the violations were for. I forget what they are. Um, but they received a default judgment. Mary sent out another email asking if there was a hearing tomorrow, is my understanding, or maybe next week in March. Um, I was not aware of the hearing. I sent another email to all the agencies. I also gave uh, Mary the information for the deputy commissioner of information of the oath hearing. Um, Again, this is not the forum to have an argument about the smoke shop. Okay. That is the, the city of New York is a brilliant place. They created 311 so that people can register a complaint. You get a tracking number. You can follow up with the tracking number. I have no issue following up with city agencies. I'm actually very good at it. And I send you the responses. Whenever somebody sends me a response from a city agency, I forward that response to the constituent that made the complaint. Um, because, again, the city can speak for themselves. I don't speak for the city of New York. I don't represent uh, DWCP. I don't represent the buildings department. That is their their responsibility. Um, I know that Assemblyman, again, I don't want to take away from Assemblyman Dinowitz, so maybe he w- may want to comment. But I did get, I spoke to uh, Frederick Klein in his office, and they sent a letter to DWCP with regards to this issue. So I think that we have been fairly responsive. The community board has, as has the elected officials. They have all been, we have all been communicating with one voice, trying to make sure that we're, we're communicating what's been going on with the smoke shop and all the complaints that we have received. We, I, again, I, I always inform people, call 311, give me the complaint number. I will follow up with the agency with that complaint number so that you know they understand and they can track that information as well. Um, but that's the answer. I mean, again, I don't know if there's another hearing because I, I have not yet heard back from Mary's request, her second request. Um, and, and the only other thing, I'll, the final thing I will say, a lot of people were interested in attending the hearing that was going to happen at DWCP. Um, we have no control over who can, and my understanding after speaking to DWCP, that is the discretion of OATH. OATH will give, they don't, again, this is, I don't know the rules. Apparently they're supposed to be open to the public, but they're not, they don't make it as transparent as we do. We're on three different streaming platforms. We send this email out to everybody. OATH does not do that. You have to send an email to OATH. You have to request permission to attend. And then my understanding is that the hearing officer will grant admission and it's again their discretion so again i don't know how that works out that's not my province i i I don't know anything about that but that you know i i wanted i know that there were a lot of people in woodlawn that wanted to attend the hearing that happened but it was all for naught because as i stated before the owner did not show up resulting in a default judgment against them so they were found guilty. I don't know what the default judgment is. I don't know if it's a penalty, if it's a, 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 a like a two hundred and fifty dollars. I don't know what it is. Um, but you know, these WCP will be following up with them. Okay. Thank you, George. All right. So if that's it for the public gallery, I'm going to move into the elected officials who are here now. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start with Mr. Dinowitz. Hello, Mr. Dinowitz. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Okay, I know that we're going to have this issue constantly. What issue am I talking about? The fact that there are two of us with the same last name. (laughs) Um, So to the gentleman who was referring to somebody as Dinowitz, uh, I'm Assemblyman Jeffrey Dinowitz, and the councilman is Councilman Eric Dinowitz. I don't need titles, but you can use my first name if it uh, prevents confusion. Anyway, let me, let me just say a few things about the smoke shop issue first. Good evening, everybody. Um, uh, well, George Torres, I think, pretty much covered it, but both my office and um, Councilman Eric Dinowitz's office have been uh, trying to address the issue, uh, c- contacting city and state agencies, because there's, you know, there's actually state legislation on this issue. And I got to tell you, 
Uh, I know only uh, people from Woodlawn just spoke on it. I find the whole issue infuriating. Uh, it is really a quality of life issue. And it's not the only location in my district where we are facing this issue. So we're, we're trying to deal with it. Uh, George gave you the latest in terms of what happened with the hearing. You know, if I only had the power to go to a store and shut it down, I would use that power. But alas, I don't have that power. But I understand the frustration and the annoyance that people have because uh, because we're, we're constantly uh, trying to protect quality of life in our communities. And this is one of those many issues that really impacts on it. And since this place is so close to PS19, uh, it, it really has to be addressed. And uh, I could just say that uh, both me and the councilman's office are, are trying to do our best uh, to to address it uh, within you know within the constraints of the law. Um, so I'll, I'll 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 put that aside for now. But it's it's not an issue which we're uh, ignoring, and we're not going to, and we're going to continue to try to do something about it. Um, I just really wanted to briefly talk, and I mean briefly because I know you have a big agenda. Uh, first, you're continuing to to meet on Zoom. We we did pass legislation uh, again uh, last year. We passed legislation, which was actually my bill, that allowed the community boards to meet on Zoom. I think it's it's unfortunate that we have to meet on Zoom, but. Uh, we want people to participate. And I got to tell you, uh, from what I've seen of the community board meetings, the attendance is actually up both uh, in terms of board members and the general public. So this has really been great to give people the opportunity to have input into what goes on in the community. But I would personally, I would really like to get back to seeing people. Uh, and I think we're slowly but surely moving in that direction. But I really miss seeing all of you and, and everybody else that normally we would see face-to-face uh, -face or mask-to-mask -mask or whatever. Um, the, the legislation that that we extended that gave, uh, gave the authority to continue to meet on Zoom actually expires soon, and I'm not 100% certain it's going to be renewed. Uh, it may be, but as you know, a lot of the mandates regarding, um, you know, masks and... Uh, Thank and you, Rocky. Else. Are, are expiring and not being renewed because the infection rate has gone down so dramatically, but we should not uh, mm -hmm. assume that it's going to stay like that. We really have to be careful. There's a new variant out there. We don't right. know what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, I try, I was going to say, I try not to tell people how to live, but that wouldn't be really true. Um, I really feel very strongly about vaccinations and I hope I just hope everybody here is vaccinated because one thing is a fact that is undeniable. Virtually everybody who is dying of COVID and it's still over 2,000 people a day in our country, virtually every one of them are unvaccinated. Meaning if you're vaccinated, yes, you can catch it, yes, you can get sick, but the odds of dying are so tiny. That okay. Anybody who's not muted, I'm sorry, uh, Assemblyman, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Ajiria, you have to unmute yourself. I muted everybody. Okay, oh, okay. thank you. Good move, George. <laughs> um, uh, I just saw in the chat, uh, would we be able to introduce legislation to extend it? That is being discussed now. I think we should extend it at least through the end of June, but I can't guarantee you today that that's going to happen. But the legislation which allows the Zoom meetings, I believe, expires on March 16th, if I'm not mistaken. So that's just a couple of weeks away. Uh, I just wanted to mention briefly, uh, we're in the midst of uh, negotiating the state budget. And the good news is, is that for once, we're not looking at massive cuts. We actually have, and this is really great, uh, a good budget year where we're going to be able to do things that we haven't been able to do. Um, I think the reason we have a lot of money this year, frankly, is because number one, we, we raised taxes last year on super wealthy, uh, number one. And number two, we received a lot of money from the federal government. And number three, taxes, you know, on sales taxes are starting to pick up again because uh, the economy has really been improving. Uh, so those three things together have been very helpful. Now, with you know, with what's going on in the world right now, we don't know how that's going to impact 
uh, the economy. We don't know what the future of the virus is going to be and so on. But at least for right now, um, we are going to be providing really big increases in the state budget for education, which, uh, which to me, I mean, hap- I, there's, there's really nothing more important than education as far as I'm concerned, although there are some other important things. Um, we're going to continue to um, fund the mandates of the CFE, the Campaign for Fiscal Equity lawsuit. Um, actually, it wasn't a lawsuit. It was, it was a ruling by the courts uh, that required more funding for schools in high-needs districts, which includes New York City. And so the amount of money that's being put into our schools this year is really going to uh, increase by a significant amount. And likewise, uh, one area that's going to do really well in our budget this year is in the healthcare sector, funding uh, for, for Medicaid, for hospitals, for j- just across the board in healthcare, home care, uh, w- uh, wages for home care workers, uh, so we're doing a lot of good things. And I'm not going to go through the whole budget now because it's, it's too much. Um, but I will say that I'm very pleased that we're, we're going to be able to get a lot of things done, things that we need to get done. And I'm hoping that after the budget is passed, I can report to you uh, so, some more specifics. The budget is due to be passed by the end of March, March 31st. So perhaps in the April meeting I can do that. And I'll cut it there. I thank you all for your time. And it's it's really great to be here again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dinowitz. Um, Let me see. I have also from Senator Biagi's office, Angela Connolly. Hi, good evening. This is Angela from Senator Biagi's office. For anyone who doesn't know me, um, I don't want to harp on the issue that we've been talking about um, too much with regard to the, the smoke shop, but I will say just want to give a thank you to George for being so responsive and easy to work with on this. Um, I, myself, and our office have been doing outreach to the city and the state both to get some answers for folks who have questions, um, regardless of, of where you fall on the issue. Um, so I will continue to do that and, and just wanted to thank George for um, for the great work that he's been doing Um you know, in, in collaborating with our office and other offices. Um, other than that, uh, I did just want to reiterate that we are around um, and our office is available for any help or assistance that anyone might need. We are not yet taking in-person appointments and we're still sorting out protocol to be able to do that in a safe way um, so that everyone feels safe and comfortable because COVID is is ho- we're hopefully trending in the right direction, but um, it's still obviously a concern. Um, so we just want to do that safely. But uh, if anyone needs to reach us, you can call us at 718-822-2049. And I'll put that number in the chat again. Um, and I'll also leave our email, our constituent services email, and then my personal email as well. So if anyone would like to reach out to me directly, please don't hesitate to do that. Um, But that's about it for me. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Okay, thank you, Angela. Um, Congressman Bowman, Nicholas Vasquez from Congressman Bowman's office is here. Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, Thank you for having me tonight and hope everybody's having a good night so far. With that said, uh, we don't have too many updates in our office with the exception that um, we are working in the office now. We're no longer working remotely, and we will be doing uh, with constituent services in person as well, but only by appointments. With that said, if anybody would like to make an appointment or need any help, please just feel free to call our office or email me directly. I, I put our information in the chat if anybody has to get in contact with me. Okay. But that's all I have for tonight. Okay. Thank you. All right. And I have... Thank you. Um, thank you. Marilix Santana Tavares from the Bronx DA's office. Hi, good evening, everyone. This is Marilex Santana Tavares from the Bronx District Attorney's office. Um, as of right now, I don't have any updates, um, but if anyone has any questions or concerns, um, please feel free to either ask me the questions now or reach out to me. I posted my information in the chat. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 
Um, I also have a, from um, Councilman Riley's office. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, everyone. So this is Cynthia from Councilmember Kevin Riley's office. Uh, both of our offices are open on an appointment basis. I will put the information again in the chat, but you can call us anytime at 718-684-5509. I've been very happy to actually see some of you guys in person at these events uh, this month and hopefully be able to see you guys at some more. We're actually having an event this Saturday uh, at Crawford Memorial. And so I'm going to be uh, touching an invitation uh, also in the chat for everyone. But the link to that is bit.ly slash capital B H M V V V. It is a Black History Month discussion on voting, anti violence, and vaccines. Just uh, giving people opportunities to talk about their concerns and what they want to see and to learn about how to get involved in some of these processes. Okay. All right. All right. So thank you. Thank you so much, um, Cynthia. Now we have um, the borough, the borough president's office, Alexis. Hi, Ms. Bennett. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Hi, George. And good evening to the board. Um, I'm happy to be here with you guys. I know I always say that, but I really am happy to be here with you guys. <laughs> um, so just a few updates. Everyone should have received their reappointment application in the mail. Um, well, those who are up for reappointment should have received it in the mail. Those are due back March 4th. And applications for new board members are also due back March 4th. If anyone has any issues um, or any questions about um, the application before sending it in, please call me, please email me. I'm always available. Uh, and other than that, the borough president will be hosting an event tomorrow. I'm going to place all of that information in the chat. And she will also be hosting a virtual conversation uh, for fathers and um, about daughters who love their fathers. And it's, it's going to be a beautiful event. So I'm also going to enter that in the chat as well. Uh, and I will be here for the remainder of the meeting if anyone has any questions for me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Alexis. All right. Now we have Harmony from Senator Bailey's office. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, this is Harmony from Senator Bailey's office. Um, so our office is open uh, for in-person constituent services uh, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. Uh, please call us or email us to make an appointment. Our information is in the chat. Uh, we are also having a Black History Month virtual museum event on Monday uh, at 12 p.m. Please join us on Facebook Live. I've also put the link in the chat. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now I see that I have a call. Is there any other elected officials that's here? No. Okay. So I see that Carl has his hand raised. Hi, that's a mistake. I was just okay. trying to get it off. Okay, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> All right, okay. Carl, no problem. All right. Um, Mr. Hall, did you? Okay, so right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a chance to speak, but um, I'm going to go through the rest of this agenda right now, all right? And then I'll let you go ahead and speak, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, what I have next on here is the community board chairperson's report. Everybody got a copy of that already, so I'm not going to read through it. But the copies that you should have read that because it was sent out with the meeting. All right. It was sent with the meeting. Okay. So um, district manager report. Um. Wait, you're, you're muted. Sorry. Um, I think Ursula sent it to everybody already so I can also skip it. Okay. Yeah, it's just about the March 16th date. Um, read it. If anybody has questions, they can email me. All right. All right. And the approval of the board minutes, I understand that they're not ready, and we don't really have last month's board minutes. Okay? So we'll table that until the next meeting. And the financial report is Tolene here. 
Tolene? Yes, of course she's here. Of course she's here. Of course. Good evening, Good evening family. <laughs> Glad to see everybody. Glad you're safe. I'm a little slow with the buttons and everything. Okay. Um, first of all, um, I, w I need to say one thing first. Or I don't know what I want to do, which, which one I want to do first. Um, I need, uh, first of all, let me thank everyone who has sent in their sunshine money to me. I appreciate you. You've been um, absolutely wonderful. And I don't know how I can help all the other members who are having a problem with sending it in. What has happened is I've had some members zeal it to me, and I've managed to get it into the bank through Ursula. Praise the Lord for Ursula. But um, I would need you to, as they say, get on the ball. Um, I don't know what else to say. We all know that it's $35. Uh, we are currently at $1,904, which is a beautiful thing, a wonderful thing. I'm loving the challenge. And if you have any questions, I'm like the easiest person you could get to. Call me anytime. Email me. Come outside the window. I know I'm in my little uh, up in the window phase right now. Um, but uh, please call me. You have my number. You have my email. If you don't, uh, uh, call Ursula. Call anybody. Okay, call one of my former students. They got it. Um, but y'all be safe and have a good evening. Okay, thank you, Tolene. All right. So at this point, we're going to get ready to go into an executive session because we have a legal matter that we have to discuss. All right. Um, so I'm going to ask. Yes. Hold on. I, I'm sorry, Ajiria. Uh, before we do that, maybe the board members that want to speak can speak because that okay. doesn't necessarily need to go into um, executive, executive succession. Okay, yeah. Sure. I know Robert, um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Goff, Barbara, there were a number of board members that wanted to speak. Okay, so board members, if you could kind of raise your hand so that we could call on you. Go ahead, Mr. Hall. Okay, um, in reference to uh, Assemblyman Denowitz, uh, he mentioned something about the budget from the state. And I just want folks to know that uh, I also am a TA president for New York City Housing Authority Development, which most of you know. We are in a battle because all, most of the housing developments are being privatized. They're being taken over by non-for-profits, but not all of them. One of the things that is getting ready to happen, and we're going to need the assistance of everyone, is the fact that public housing has to remain public. Because if it does not remain public, where are these folks who are in uh, shelters going to go? Where are they going to graduate? Now, we already have this problem when it comes to this work called vouchers. The New York City Housing Authority has a chairman who is now privatizing most of the developments. And as we speak, Baychester, Edenwall, and Boston Seacore are about to be privatized. And it looks good. That's a very good thing in one respect. However, what you may not know is as of the 28th of, of February, even while we'll be without any gas for, for 30 days. Now, that's man's inhumanity to mankind. However, I was just told at a meeting last night, they should be lucky because there are some developments that have gone without gas for over 200 days. So there's a lot going on. Uh, there's much more that meets the eye. The state budget is key. I probably will have to go up there on behalf of public housing to see that public housing remains public and that no more developments become privatized. All right? Once they, they're trying to start what they call a blueprint for change. And what that means is everyone in Section 9 will become Section 8. And then they will create a portfolio and take that portfolio and go out and get loans and privatize the developments. Now, that's good in some respects. It's not good in all respects. So this is something you have to look at. Um, 
you know, if anyone wants to get any further information, please feel free to contact me. I am going to be, I'm going to need assistance from everybody who knows me because I got to get the ear of the people who are in charge to make them fully understand just what is really going on. Not what they say is going on, but what is really going on. So on that note, I'm going to be quiet, but I just want to put that in the ear of everyone on this board. Okay. And I thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hall. All right. I understand Ms. Gibson. Ms. Gibson wants to speak. Yes. Am I next? Yes. Okay. I'm speaking about our chair. Michael okay. Burke. So is that something, George, should we wait until the executive session? I don't know, Barbara, what do you want to say? I'll wait to the executive session. Okay. Okay. And is there a uh, Ms. Beatrice? Yes. Hi. Um, and you let me know, Jerry, if this is something that needs to wait uh, to the executive session. Okay. Um, I'm really disappointed in last month's meeting and the fiasco that it ended up being on that particular vote. And I don't know if you're all aware, but there's a Bronx Times article that came out on that fiasco, which is very discouraging. Um, it has us board members looking like we're not actively participating. We're not informing ourselves. There are a lot of new members. So I'd like to discuss that article a little bit further so I can be on record. Um, the fact that we are volunteers, we do have full-time jobs, we don't get paid for this, we do try our very best, and that article made it seem like we are inactive and we're not informing ourselves. Okay. All right. Thanks. Is that something uh, that I goes there? to the executive am session? Yeah, we could go to the executive session. With no, that. no, no. That can be spoken about now. There's, okay. There's sure. nothing to do. Yeah. All right. Um, and I can share that. I'll put it in the chat, but it has me looking bad. It has Denise Bond looking bad. And it's just, I'm like totally disappointed. Um, George, with all due respect, the way it has you speaking on our behalf is like the board members need to inform ourselves and we're not informing ourselves and we're making these votes without being informed. And, and I brought it up at that meeting that we waste so much time on things that are irrelevant, that things that do matter are like, you know, we're not, we're not, we're voting without having that full information. And so I do understand that you said this was brought up since October 2019. Some of us don't have the luxury of retaining all this information or joining every single meeting. And so what format can we come up with so that this is avoided? How can we keep ourselves informed? Can we, whenever we take a vote, have an informational session where we go over pros and cons before we vote? What kind of structure can we implement to avoid any of that happening again? Okay. Whose responsibility is that? Madam Chair, may I respond? Um, yes, and then I think I heard Johnny Goff wanted to speak too. So yes, go yeah, ahead. I, I, thank you. I just want to say, if the more board members would come to the land use committee hearings, they would be more informed. A lot of people just you know come to the regular meeting once a month on Thursday, and don't get involved with anything else. The, at the land use committee, it was uh, batted around, and I read the article. There's a lot of in, wrong information in the article. We're not anti-development. This is the first development we have turned down as long as I can remember. And, and you know, somebody from the inside called the paper, and had them write this terrible, terrible thing up. And I will tell you, the person that wrote it has no idea what she's writing about. I, I mean, she graduated from Bernard. Big deal. That doesn't mean she's uh, a, a brilliant person. And she's a digital editor. I mean, she didn't even have the courtesy to call me as chair of land use to find out what she, what she was going on. She she wrote on gossip that that... Uh, she was fed by somebody from the board. And unfortunately, it makes us all look bad, but there are procedures to go and do. And even though I was anti-building uh, that uh, pro uh, project, the point is, 
you know, if members went to the land use committee, they could have overruled the, uh, the recommendation. That's why we bring it to the full board after we have a committee meetings. And the land use committee technically has 10 members, but the whole board is part of the land use system. So I would recommend when there's a land use issue that all board members attended. And, and we can get a better handle on what the whole board feels, because then you will hear the developer what they're, what they're planning to do so you can uh, make an intelligent vote on it. Unfortunately, most of the board members do not attend these meetings. And then when it comes down to the board, oh, I don't know anything about you know, that's true. You wouldn't because nobody was there. I, Girl, with I respect, all due respect you still have to. We need a summary sheet. I get what you're saying, but things are happening in people's lives. I have COVID. My grandmother had COVID. She passed away from COVID. People are experiencing real life situations. And so it is unfair for this to just be put on us. How can information be decimated so that we can capture it? Can a summary sheet be handed out? Well, at the end? what can you do? Is it your responsibility? I get it. If, if board members aren't attending, how do we keep them informed? Well, there's a, a, a daily, there should be a report written by the secretary of the land use, uh, committee to be attached to the meeting notice for the next board meeting. So was that captured? Like, is there somewhere that I can go back and see that that did happen and that I could have informed myself well, that way? You can go back to the minutes of the, of the meeting we had where, where it was voted down. And see if it was attached to that. No, I'm saying before the vote. Was there an information yeah. sheet that well, we were with the information the, that George you, gave us about the zoning? Is that somewhere well, that we could have read? There's a zoning book you can read, yes. Carl, please, please. You're not no, listening no, to what I'm saying. You can't no, just I, go read a book. Said, but- when there are experts on this board that can help us understand, you have to understand we're volunteering our time. This is not our profession where we can easily understand what's happening. How as a board can we be more effective in informing each other so that we're making wise, informative votes and decisions? We all do well, this community um, board because we want to make a difference. How do we inform each other so we're making wise votes and decisions? Just well, saying we read a book isn't it. That isn't cut. There's an easy there's an easy answer for that. Okay, hold on. Excuse me. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Let's wait a minute. George, we do have to go to this executive session right now. And I'm hearing these conversations. It's like, you know, should it go to the executive session or not? No. Because all right. No, we're not the, the the issue for executive is when you discuss okay um personnel salaries and ethical issues and stuff like that. All right. I think what, but I do want to, I know that there are a number of people that have their hands raised. I know Beatrice and Carl, let me just say something very quickly. Um, uh, This meeting, just like every single meeting that we do is recorded. That reporter didn't speak to anybody, Carl. She wrote the article because we park all of our content on the YouTube so if you don't like the stuff that you came or the way you came across in the meeting, that's not on me. Well, first of all, I didn't say it was on you. I don't no, care. I understand. I understand. I'm just saying if, if you have a problem with the way that you come across on these meetings, you have to understand that we park all of our content. This is now in perpetuity. We have this on YouTube right now. It exists. And B, to your question... Yes, the information is there. The responsibility for minutes after every meeting resp- re- does it, we don't have secretaries for uh, committees, Carl. That is your responsibility as the chair. You were supposed to write minutes for your meeting and you hand them. I think Harry wrote the, me- the minutes for your meeting, the land use meeting, because I guess he just did it. Um, but again, for those people, for, yeah, yeah, but for people who don't, don't want to read the minutes, we have a recording. We're the most transparent board in the Bronx. We put everything that we do on YouTube because we record it. So again, 
if you want to be mindful about the stuff that you say, you have to look at what you said during the meeting. It was a poor comment. I, I will agree with you, uh, B, because it didn't sound good when you said, oh, well, I would have voted a different way had I known this. That's had not there been cool. a recap, had there been a recap before we voted, we would have made a more informed decision. And that and, wasn't captured. So the and, fact that is like the way is not how I looked is that I want to make wise, informed decisions. We all well, have a lot I, I want to address are. that, B. I, I want to address that because if you read my report from last month's meeting, I recommended in the district manager's report that you support both projects. Did you read my report to your point that you need a recap? Are you understanding? I get what you're saying, but right before the vote, my thing is right before we vote, is that possible that we recap the pros and the cons before we vote? That's all I'm asking. Is that possible that we put that moving forward, that right before each vote, we have a recap before we vote? Is it possible? If you want to spend to 11 o'clock at night, yeah, we can do You're anything you want. We're spending a lot of time crawling things that make no sense on fights. We already spend a lot of time on fights and not things that are relevant to important things that are happening in our community. Well, first of all, I, uh, like I said, this is the first time we ever wrote it down a development that I can remember. And number two, I'm not sorry for anything I said at that meeting because it's you, uh, you have to say what you feel, and I appreciate where you're coming from. I really do. But this, it, maybe we can take a look at do things differently. I, I really don't know. I'm going to have to think this out. But I, I take exception to the reporter, and also George said, well, she got it off YouTube. Well, you know what? If she was a good reporter, she would have tried to get in contact with the people she quoted to make sure – you know, she understands why they said what they said. And she didn't do it, which makes her a bad reporter. And that's all I have to say. All right. I have on here oh. Sydney Blair. That's the next person. Oh, excuse me, Ursula. I mean, oh, hey, Jerry, I, yes, Barbara. I would like to speak. Hello, Ursula. Egeria. Yes, um, Johnny. Yes, please. I mean, yes. I, I, you know. Thank you, um, Vice President, um, and respectful to all. I, I get it what the young lady is talking about, but let's move forward. Two things I have to say, and it doesn't affect the ex executive um, meeting. Yeah. When we had our last meeting, I sent words to the chair and asked to speak, and I wasn't able to. I had an announcement to make which re re represent black history. I want to thank everybody who attended the Black History on the 17th of February. It was great. It was a great turnout at the YMCA. The children in the district did fabulous artwork. And the culinary students from Truman cooked all the food for us. And it was very well attended. That's one thing. The second thing, question I have, pretending to either George or the ball president um, um, person, we are doing our reappointment, okay? I came across a question that asked about the uh, sexual harassment um, video uh, that we have to take each year. I believe Ursula said if you have your paperwork and, it doesn't, and George said if it doesn't expire until July, you really don't have to take it over again. I'm not sure that I have my paperwork because I lost a lot of my paperwork through a loss of a wallet. Now... The question is that before we sent our paperwork in for reappointment for March 4th, I know it was notarized, but if you don't have that copy of the paper to go with your reappointment, what do you do, George? You're muted. Do you have a record? You're, George, you're muted. We don't have a record in the office, no. but uh, the borough president's office would have it. All right. Um, looking at the hands, Ursula, you have something to say? Yeah, I just wanted to respond back to Miss Beatrice. Uh, we're working on getting training programs. 
Okay. Training classes for everybody. Thank you. Which I think would help. Okay. All right. And Sydney oh, sorry about that. Yes. <laughs> I'm unmuted now. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sydney. Hi, um, everyone. I just wanted to um, kind of comment on that uh, land use issue. Um, kind of as a all around person. Um, I've been a member now for two years. Um, unfortunately, because I moved, um, my membership will expire next month. But um, I've been to literally almost every single meeting since I joined the board. I am a nursing student. I work full time. I have siblings that I actively take care of. I have parents that I am constantly running errands for. I do internships and I do all these things. And I've attended every single board meeting. At the same time, I'm also currently working with Keisha Martin on that newsletter because while I say yes, you know, if you can and you have the opportunity, it's it's great to like attend all the other board meetings, uh, all the committee meetings, even if you're not on the committee, because time and time again, I've attended every committee meeting. And when I have something to say, for the most part, it's, I've never had anybody, you know, like disagree with me or like at least not see where I'm coming from. And I've always put my input in. But I say all of this to say that I also see where Beatrice is coming from. Because with all of this, like, I would say I've probably missed five meetings in the last two years. And it's a lot of information. Me and Keisha going through the minutes. I also don't think that the minutes are enough because, uh, you know, as a, as a summary to Beatrice's point, I don't think it's enough to read the minutes. And because uh, even like trying to put together a template for this newsletter that could like summarize what each committee is doing so that everybody gets an idea of what is going on in Community Board 12, we were like grasping at straws. So I think um, for that record, uh, I think that uh, the minutes maybe need a little more um, more standardized thing because everybody takes minutes differently. So you and you can see that when you read the minutes because I read all the minutes even though I attend every single me meeting because maybe there's something you know I was cooking maybe I was cooking and I missed something. But it's like, I don't think it's a matter of reading that zoning book and just understanding the zoning, but really understanding what is going on here. Like the presentations, I, again, I've attended all these meetings because I'm a part of the land use committee. I'm a part of the housing committee. They drone on and I'm, <laughs> and, you know, we have a lot of questions and we, you know, we tell them, come back with uh, something for this and something for that. We need to be better at summarizing that so that people who, or even if we're not going to be uh, better at summarizing it, we record, as George said, we record all the meetings. They go on YouTube. Why, why not in the minutes say uh, from this part to this part, this is where the, the developers come in and, uh, do their presentation. So if you have 20 minutes, watch their presentation because it's not like we interrupt as they're giving their presentation. We let them give their presentation and then we, they ask us if we have questions and that's when we tear them to shreds. So, <laughs> you know, if we could at least include in our minutes, hey, if you have 20 minutes out of your time, please just listen to this presentation on this housing development before you come to the board meeting. You know, I'm just I'm just throwing out ideas because I understand where Carl is coming from. Yes, it would be great if more uh, board members, regardless of the committee that they're in, attended all the board meetings or attended as many as they could. You know, I was even at one point last year, I was helping Beatrice trying to uh, get her survey out. I'm not a part of the um, her committee that she runs, but I was so um, 
involved that I wanted to help out. I, you know, so I think if we can't at least get a template started for the minutes, we can at least start shifting people in the direction of, hey, from 20 minutes and 30 seconds to 40 minutes and 40 seconds, this is where developer XYZ presents on address. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Hello. All right. Who is this? This is Ashley Jones. So this is the first time I'm actually um, attending a board meeting, but I do want to just echo off the last, um, what the, like kind of the suggestion that the lady said, as far as in minutes, there's some templates out there that I could send over that actually does that kind of thing. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I thank you. All right. So who's next? I have Ivan. Ivan Boris. Yeah, um, I don't want to spend more time on this. Obviously, we spent a lot of time on it, but I will say um, in response to Ms. Beatrice um, and her points and all, and also Carl's, what I will say is that this is something that I spoke. I have an easy fix, and it's what we originally had. We had committee reports, and those reports were reported at board meetings so that this way you had some type of synopsis as to what took place during the committee meetings. That was taken away where committees and committee chairs lost their voice and they only had it through a minutes or something that was written down or something like what was being said that it's being recorded. But as far as it was reported before, when I spoke out on this, we all know what happened. Okay, this is why I advocated and I spoke under it, under this leadership, uh, under our current leadership. Okay. So we used to report, so again, to, to, to re- um, paraphrase again, we used to be able to, we used to report, and then everybody knew what was going on. And last but not least, we put our trust in those committees and the chairs. There was many times that chairs actually didn't agree with the committee, but they said, listen, I don't agree with uh, um, what the committee came to the conclusion of, but this is what the committee wanted, or this is what the committee recommends. And we put our trust in that, and that's how we used to vote. So since that has ceased, now we're running into these issues. So my last point is, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Have a good night, everyone. All right. Thank you. Um, Alfredo? What's going on, everybody? Um, I guess here we go again. Um, So just touching base on what Ms. Beatrice said, uh, I agree with her in that, you know, I guess before a particular vote is being... um, 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 submit to the board that you know is being spoken about. What happened in the last month's meeting was that you know, you know, a call straight up said that he's not supporting it. So when he, him as the chair, he and he again it's his objective. He could say what he wants, but him as the chair saying that everyone else took it like if he's not supporting it and he's the chair, none of us is, should support it. So I think what what Ms. Beatrice is saying is that if someone or somebody should have spoken more and said, okay, I'm not supporting it, but this is the reason why I'm not supporting it. And then let everyone else that, again, it's probably like 50, 50 board members. All 50 board members cannot be on meetings. People have lives. I mean, people have people to take care of. You know, people have personal issues. And, you know, they cannot be all at all meetings. Some of us do, you know. I mean, I was just in a funeral. I stopped my funeral for a good friend of mine to be on this meeting. You see what I'm saying? So again, everybody has their own, you know, you know, things that they're doing. So we cannot blame people for not being in meetings and then tell them, you know, you should read a book or you should do this. That's not the way we. That's not the way we gotta be. That's not the way we work. If somebody doesn't understand before a vote is taken, let's speak about it like that. Everyone on the board that was not present in any meeting understands. You know, if you say no, everybody else is going to say no. If you say no, but this is why I say no, and then everybody else is going to say, you know what, just because he said no, I'm not going to vote no. And that was the issue we had last time. It's very unfortunate because, I mean, it was very unfortunate what happened in that last vote. Um, That's what I'm going to say. Okay. Um, Lisa Hayes? Lisa? Just wanted to follow up with um, Mr. Figueroa um, and with Mr. Al- I'm sorry, with Ms. 
the other gentleman that spoke before. I'm sorry, I do know your name, Ivan. And so when they both said something that I thought was really keen, we, last time when we spoke, usually um, in other meetings, we usually have recommendations. And so um, not having a recommendation, a clear recommendation from the chair, I think was very confusing. Confusing, I think as each one of of us decide to be a part and take on a title that we have to walk with courage. And I'm not saying that anybody didn't, but you have to make a decision not only to speak for the better half of yourself, but for the whole community. So I do appreciate you, Mr. Stricker, for saying that this is what you were against um, and you didn't want to make a recommendation. But I will say um, we are trusting in each and every board for each people, for all the people who show up to show up and then come back to us telling us what they think is best, because that is what we do as a community. And that's what I thought. Um, and that's what I would appreciate if there needs to be a motion to move um, so that we have to so that we can go back to hearing these things before we take votes, then I will happily do it. Um, just I don't know if this is the appropriate time. Thank you. OK, uh, Luke Sabato. Hi, uh, thanks so much. Um, all of this uh, conversation the past couple months about land use. You're muted. Hello? Luke? All right. Mr. Hall? We have um, Council Member Denowitz. Robert, you've already spoken. You can go again, but we need to kind of wrap this up, too. Yeah. All right. In, in the sake of time, I just wanted to say what uh, Ivan Boras said is true with regards to notes, and maybe it'll be better off for us to have notes since housing and land use are combined. If I know in advance, we can do the notes. Um, you know, we can get the notes done. That may better prepare everyone else uh, so they can study the notes. And let's just go forward from there. And always remember, you, you're right here on YouTube, and there's a reason why you're here. So somebody's trying to knock you off. So do the best you can do, all right? Make your own decision based on what you hear. But let's, let's go back to the notes. Thank you. Okay. All right, we do have Mr. Eric Dinowitz is here. Hello, Mr. Dinowitz, how are you? <laughs> Hello, but you know, I always say you can call me Eric. My students used to call me Mr. Dinowitz. <laughs> you call me, you all call me Eric. Okay, uh, Eric. <laughs> if you really want to be formal, it could be Mr. Eric. Okay, Mr. Uh, Eric. <laughs> um, I'll be quick. I'll start. You know, I, I, you know, I, I know there's a lot of, um, discussion about the, the way the board functions and the land use but but to be honest I, I think uh, I'll editorialize a little I probably shouldn't but I'll, I'll say that I think the back and forth and the open dialogue really is important and it's really encouraging uh, to see that for, from your for, from this community board um, so I, I, I do want to say that and just you know speaking of of the land use I take your when it comes to any development uh, I take your um, your positions and your opinions heavily into consideration. Um, and for those of you that don't know the process, when, when there's a ULURP and there's an application to change the zoning or get a variance, um, it goes to you, then it goes to the borough president, and then it goes to the city council. So there's still opportunities to make uh, your voice heard, to, to voice your concerns uh, about a particular um, issue. And I did hop on late, but I kind of assume this is about the Furman Avenue uh, rezoning. Um, it's going to go to the borough president and then it's going to go to me to a vote for the council. Um, and I'm certainly happy to take um, any other feedback. If, if, if information has changed, for example, the number of parking spaces and that impacts the way you feel, please reach out to my office and let me know. Um, but there's still time to make that happen. Uh, and speaking of feedback, it is budget season. There are a number of nonprofits that have requested funding parks, schools, libraries, cultural institutions always need money. What I'm interested in is where you think the money should go. So if, uh, so if you are um, on my email list or if you, uh, if you could just mute yourself if you're not speaking, it would be great. Thank you. Um, I'm soliciting feedback from the community via Google form for capital and expense 
where you want to see the money prioritized. So if you go to ericdinowitz.nyc slash budget feedback, and I can actually put that in the uh, chat, um, ericdinowitz.nyc slash budget feedback, you can fill out that Google form and you say, you know, I, I want mental health services prioritized or I want, you know, parks in the community prioritized. And I'm going to take all that information when we, we talk about discretionary funding. Um, a few pieces of legislation. Uh, today, the city council, we voted on the first step in addressing outdoor seating. Um, we voted on a zoning change so that the outdoor seating can be addressed via, uh, sorry, with local laws, with, with, with legislation. One of the things I'm very concerned about, about regarding the legislation that impacts the outdoor seating for restaurants, that's the both the, what they're called, people call them sheds uh, in the street and sidewalk cafes, is your voice and local uh, community input. Because way downtown Manhattan is not the same as Borough Park, is not the same as Woodlawn and Wakefield. Uh, and similar to liquor licenses, for example, which go before the community board, the local community knows the, you know, the relationship the restaurant may have with the community uh, and the needs of that specific part of the district. So one of the things I'm working on, I'm bringing the, the sponsor of the legislation, I'm trying to get uh, other administration officials to come to the district, just to show them how our life here in the Bronx uh, is different than, you know, again, Midtown Manhattan, to make sure the legislation reflects that. Um, last state and meeting, I introduced a bill that would Im improve 311 response time. Today, I introduced two, one piece of legislation, one resolution. Uh, the, the legislation would improve the voter guide. It was introduced last session very late, uh, didn't, didn't go to committee. I reintroduced it, and what this does is it includes more offices in the voter guide so that you, when you're voting, can be more informed about who's on the ballot. Uh, and the other is a resolution reaffirming our commitment to our Purple Heart veterans. Uh, and urging New York State to pass legislation so that we become a Purple Heart State. Uh, and lastly, I just want to encourage all of you to sign up for my newsletter. It really is the best way for me to share with you what's going on in the neighborhood, for you to hear events. We're having fire safety Zooms. Um, we're, we're working on addressing a, a spate of uh, anti-Semitic and racist and homophobic graffiti that has been uh, coming up in the neighborhood. And of course, social media to... Um, to, to get um, more up to date, really a more immediate sort of uh, news items, and to see kind of so what I'm doing in the community. Uh, and with that, uh, I, I want to leave it there. I think in the chat, um, Enzo actually put some of the links. Um, yes. Yeah, so so yes. if you look in the chat, uh, my staff member uh, Lorenzo Manzano, who's on the call, uh, Eric Dino to NYC slash Fire Safety. Eric Dino to NYC slash newsletter, Eric Dino to NYC slash budget feedback. Those are different ways to sign up for the different events. Um, so uh, any, if there are any questions or comments, love to hear them. Uh, Luke put a comment in the chat. Um, Council member Dinowitz, please help support outdoor dining in our community. We don't have very many restaurants participating. The disparity of participation by neighborhood is staggering. Right. The flip side of that is, is I think, uh, in the Bronx at the beginning of the pandemic, we had hundreds more restaurants able to participate in the outdoor seating. Um, I, as a general rule, I like the idea of outdoor seating. I like the support it gives to restaurants. I like being able to honestly being able to go out in the summer and enjoy a drink, uh, you know, outside. I think that's really nice. Um, my my concern is that a city agency is going to have more say over your community than than you do. Um, so what so what we can do is, is, you know, talk to some of the local businesses, make sure that they know about outdoor uh, seating, um, the disparity of participation. Again, that's the restaurant that's that's uh, participating, um, attending classes and other meetings. But I can write. Uh, OK, um, sorry, I'm just trying to read the chat to see if there are other questions. I don't see any other questions, but again, the, the, the outdoor seating discussion is far from over. We want to support it, but support it in the right way that meets the needs of individual communities. So email my office to share your concerns with me. Uh, any other uh, concerns, 
uh, that you want to share with me? Class size bill. Uh, it is not, so um, the class size bill, it is a piece of legislation that amends the health code. Okay, sorry, let me take it back. Class size is determined by the UFT DOE contract, which I think caps it at, in a high school, at least 34 kids in a class, and in some instances, 36, which is way too many. And, and I can tell you, I taught self-contained classes with kids with higher, with, with more needs, um, more severe disabilities, for example. Very often, because those children were in a smaller class, they often outperformed their general education peers because their peers were in bigger classes. So smaller class sizes is uh, probably one of the biggest uh, or most impactful uh, uh, factors in a student's education. The bill that's that, that was introduced last term or last um, session would actually amend the health code to require each student to have more square feet around them. I think up from 16 to 35 or something, uh, something around there. Uh, and that was one way to reduce class size. We are in the process of reintroducing bills in the city council. It, it did not pass last session. It is, it has not yet been reintroduced because most bills that are, that were, have not been reintroduced. But that is something that's extremely important to me. I, I, you know, I saw first that any parent knows they want their child getting that individual attention, both for academic needs and for social emotional needs. So that is the status of the class size bill, Anna. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Eric. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, so. I mean, the time is going on, and we do have to have an executive session. We can come I, I back. I still like to speak. I changed my mind. I like to speak, please. I mean, we can, yeah, we can resume our board meeting. So it, it depends on what should we do, George. Uh, you said, you, Barbara, you said you wanted to speak about our chair. Um, again, I don't know what the nature of the question is, so I guess... Is it involved? Ask your question, and I guess we'll see if we can answer it now. Can I ask I a question? To, sir? I want to make a statement about the incident that happened. Which okay. incident? On February the twenty seventh. Uh, then I think we'll re re we'll wait for executive session. Yes. Um, somebody else was talking. Yes, I feel that the society needs to know more than what we're going to do with the session. I'm so, well, once we get there, which is hopefully the next minute or so, we will explain it. But you have to get there. That means okay. board members have to stop talking. Yeah. So what's the next question? Hi, this is Hillary. How are you all? Hillary who? Bloomfield. How are you? Oh, hey, what's up? How you been? Uh, okay. I had wanted to ask about the um, sanitation and to make a, a remark about the um, outside seating with the restaurants while Eric was on the phone, you know, was speaking. Oh, yeah. um, however, what I wanted to say is sanit how will that work with the restaurant sanitation, the cars parking? You know, if you have outside restaurants, are they going to be in the street or are they going to be on the sidewalk? Like downtown, they have some of them in the street, some of them is on the sidewalk. Is that going to be the same thing up here? There's, it's my understanding that there are two different text amendments right now before city planning. One is uh -huh. specifically just for the sidewalks. And then there is a separate one specifically for street. Um, right. I can't speak to, but I will follow up with you, Hillary. I still have all your contact information. I will get you everything from city planning. Okay. Um, and what about the sanitation issue? Because, you know, with the garbage is not picked up regularly like it should, you know, uh, on the corners, and we don't have enough garbage cans in a lot of these street corners. So that's I, another issue. And you know, I got it, you. It brings more rodents. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I got you. Listen, it's it, it's a it's a prevalent issue throughout the district. Um, you know, we've been trying to address it and asking for more services. The city has been a little responsive, but you know, they can be doing much, much better. Um, we got to complain about the bike lanes, for example, and the trash in the bike lanes. Um, you know, right. hopefully they were responsive. Um, 
But again, we'll I, we can follow up offline. We really need to um, get okay. into okay, our no executive problem. session. So, uh, Nigeria, um, just explain to the board members why we're going to executive session so that we can get a motion, the board can vote, and then we can go into it. And then we explain to the public that we're, they can not participate in the executive session. Right. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah. All right. yes. So we're going into an executive session because we have a legal matter to discuss. So I need a motion for us to go to the executive session. We can resume the board meeting if there are things that you still want to discuss as far as the board. But right now, we do have to have this minute to um, discuss this legal matter. So can I get a motion to you know, go to the executive session, Robert? Barbara Gibson, I give the motion to go to the executive session. OK. Well, I second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.